before I went to World Championships in London, every Casual. break that I had, spring break, yeah. summer break, I'd move to Olympic Training Center and, and train. I see. Before we got our medals, I uh, just After moved to the, the Olympic Training Center. <laughs> I went to London for... And then to train for the next We get Olympics. it. We get it. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Couple Things. With Sean and Andrew. A podcast all about couples. And the things they go through. We have been counting down the days for this interview. We have Hunter Woodall and Tara Davis. That's right. They're two legends, two Olympians, and hopefully two new friends. Sean, I'm going to let you introduce Tara, and then I'll introduce Hunter. Tara's a boss, NCAA indoor and outdoor long jump champion, first woman in UT's history to clear 22 feet in the long jump, Wild. American junior record holder in the indoor long jump, one-time Olympian in 2020, Olympic Games Tokyo 2020, she came in sixth. That's right. And then let me introduce Hunter. So Hunter is a two-time Paralympian, three-time Paralympic medalist. Uh, he was also at the 2020 Paralympic Games in Tokyo, where he won a bronze. In Rio, 2016, he won a silver, silver and a bronze. And in 2017, he was a silver medalist at the World Championships. So two very good athletes, to say the least. But also, they are creators themselves. They are YouTube geeks, just like us. And we sat down and had a really fun conversation all about their experience as athletes and their experience on the internet and their experience as a couple. So we covered a lot of ground here, um, really enjoyed our time, and I learned a bunch. Their attitude and approach to life is just magnetic. That's how I would describe it. It is. We had a blast. We could have talked to them for hours. I am positive you guys are going to love this as much as we did. And you may be asking yourself, how is Hunter a Paralympian? Well, he was born with a congenital defect in which his fibulas and his lower legs actually never formed. And so he had to get his legs amputated below the knee at 11 months old. So he grew up di playing different sports um, still, mm -hmm. amazingly. And I just love his story. He, like, dominates his sport and does it with style. So big fan of these two. And if you want to find out more about them, we will link their information down below. But without further ado, we bring you Hunter and Tara. Hunter and Tara, what a treat this is. We've been looking forward to this interview for months. So thank you for making it happen. When your names went up on our board that you were booked for the show, I freaked out. I literally <laughs> freaked out. I have been watching you guys since before the Olympics. Like, I remember seeing like the first Instagram picture come through of you guys together. And I was like, wait, what? Because <laughs> you're you're both being like talked about as like Olympic prospects. I was like, this is this is crazy. We have to get him on the show. Now you're here. It's the wildest so. thing. I feel really really blessed that we were on on the board of your guys. Yeah, so that's insane. Yes. Thanks for having us. Well, and we've had to shift it a few times. You guys have had to like shift this, and I started getting really sad. I was like, is this gonna happen? I know. Yeah, I was really so hoping it was going to happen. I was like, oh, yeah. I just want to do it, please. Yeah. Yes. And those are just insane. I mean, I, I think everybody is kind of able to, to, you know, feel the same thing. Like everyone's schedule has just been absolutely insane. And this year has been just moving by. It's like yeah. a yes. catch up year, finally. <laughs> it really is a catch up year and people are getting crazy with it, which is, yeah. it's been a lot. Let me just start in the only logical place. Hunter, your hair looks A plus today, bro. I don't know what you did. I don't know what your routine is, but it works. All right. You want to know what's funny? I actually um, woke up early because I had an early workout and I wore this beanie all day. Uh, so this is my hair post beanie. And I just got back from a massage. And he was about to throw that beanie on. I was like, no, your hair looks yeah. great. The hair looks great. The hair looks great. Good to know. Good to know. It's a big okay, so we'll start from the beginning and come back, but I have to start here real quick. I will never forget. So something that Andrew and I love is we love that both being athletes, we've kind of gone into the digital creation world. It's a whole new world, but mm -hmm. I will never forget. It was after the Olympics. You guys had come home in the one. of I don't remember what video it was, but you guys had posted a video of. Was it Hunter? You like dropped a TV off of the back of a truck or whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, and which one was it? Oh, it's just like how how my fiance expects me to answer the phone whenever she calls. Kind of video. <laughs> yes. yeah. And I died because one, <laughs> it was in a phenomenal video, and two, I was like, oh, they're creators. Yeah. This is amazing. <laughs> Great. And it's just been really funny to see and fun to see and watch you guys kind of create your your presence on the social world. So thank congratulations. Yeah, By the way, that You're video was brain. amazing. 
He has all the brains for it. I don't know. She doesn't credit herself. She's pretty. She's pretty <laughs> smart as well when she's when she's willing to 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 actually do it and, and, <laughs> and get get her hands dirty in the social world. So. But thank you. It's a scary world out there. It is. There's a lot of eyes. There's a lot of eyes. A lot of opinions, mm -hmm. and it can be tough Man. to like put something out there, especially if it like comes from a place of like your own creativity, because mm -hmm. that's like that's an expression of who you are. And if somebody doesn't like it, it's like, well, that's that's me. So you know what I mean. How do you guys deal with that? Because I remember Andrew actually convinced me to do the whole social creation world um, many years after I retired. But going from athletics where it's almost like a math equation. So if you run fast enough, if you jump far enough. Wow. Black cat. <laughs> What's his name? Her name. Her name's Azula. Uh, you literally can't even see her on your shirt. Yeah. No, yeah. She's. Oh, no. The yeah. dogs That's and the awesome. animals are starting to come. <laughs> oh, yeah, guys. Anyways, with like gymnastics for me, everything was kind of like a math problem where if I, I knew by my performance how I should be judged. But in the social world, it's a whole different ballgame. Mm -hmm. People just have yeah. opinions that don't make any sense. Yeah. But it can be really hard for like athletic mentality or ath how do I say that? And the athlete mentality. There you go. To like digest that. So how have you guys been? dealing with that world um i mean it comes and goes i mean some comments still sting but you know like we've learned from it and i've just figured that it's just another person behind a computer just another person on a keyboard they're like they don't even know who i am they're just judging just from a screen or from an instagram profile you know they don't really know who we are who i am yeah i feel like i've tried to like apply like the athlete mentality to social media um and as you guys know it's like in athletics like it's very like cause and causation like there's a very clear line like i did these things in practice and it helped me in this way like i benefited in this way like i needed to change this one thing that i'm doing while i'm running and fix my technique and it's gonna lead to faster times x y and z and when i create social media content it's kind of the same thing like I'm like testing things, right? Like I make something, I put it out and I say, okay, this performed this way. And this is why I think it performed this way. Right. Like I did this at the beginning of the video, which I really think helped, you know, be a good hook to add retention, to like tell the story that I'm trying to tell through content. And I think like through the last, I don't know, four or five years that we've been doing social media stuff, I've, I've started to learn stuff and figured it out, but kind of things that, you know, make the, social media platforms tick and things that work and things that people want to see. And it's like, it's just a learning experience. And it's just about like really being dedicated to what you're doing. And in, in my personal opinion, like actually taking it seriously. Mm -hmm. mm. That's good. Tell us how you guys met. Naturally at a track meet. Yeah. <laughs> at a track meet in Idaho. Um, we were 17. Yeah. Um, and it was actually, in, it was on my eighteenth. Yeah, birthday. Was, it was. Okay, oh, so on his birthday, it was in twenty seventeen, and we're like seniors in high school. And um, at this track meet, it was an indoor meet, so everything's pretty close together, and like the warm up is like very small. So while I was warming up, he was warming up at the same time, and I saw him. I was like, "Ooh, I see the fine specimen right there." Um, and I just thought he was super cute. Had no idea who he was, what he did. Um, and then he ran and everyone's like, oh, it's his birthday. Is this Hunter Woodhull? Um, uh, uh, saying every accolade he ever owned. I was like, wow, like that's, that's crazy. But he's fine. Like, dang. After he finished his race, I was like, oh my gosh, I have to go up to him. And I went up to him and I hugged him. And I said, I don't know why, but I have to hug you. And I did. And I don't, there was no reasoning. To add some context to like wow. at the time. I'm, I wasn't that well known. Like I, I'm, I'm just, you know, a little bit different. Cause I'm like a kid with no legs running track with all these people with legs. So it's like a little bit out of the ordinary, but Tara is like the best athlete in the country, like national records, like legit. Everyone knows who she is in the track world. Like she's hot stuff. So I obviously like know who she is very clearly. Like that's Tara Davis. And she's at the same meet as us. And when she said she walked up to me and gave me a hug, it wasn't just like, randomly she walked onto the track <laughs> at the meet like after i finished running 400 walked up on the track and said this so i was like first of all i know who this is second of all i don't know why she's hugging me 
and I just <laughs> ran a quarter mile. So I'm like really he's like, tired, you know? He's like, <sighs> okay. And I was like, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna take a win where I can get it. So dang. Wait, boy. what happened after that? Did you start dating like right away? No, 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 no. no. So, so I, I was too nervous to talk to her like the rest of the, the meet. So I, I I was like walking around the meet like on purpose thinking that maybe I would accidentally stumble, you know, with her and like, we could have a conversation. Um, we talked for like 30 seconds when we were getting our medals for our events. And Casual. Then that was like really it that we had like spoke during the meet. And then I remember after we both went home, she went back to California. I was back in Utah and I had tweeted something. It was like probably nine 30, 10 o'clock, like in the evening. And Tara like sent me that message and was like, something to the effect of like you should be in bed like, why are you up you so sleeping? late yeah and i was like oh I it's said... on i was like wow. and then from then it's just you know like talking seeing each other at meets um i moved to california that summer which which kind of helped so we probably talked for six eight months before we ever started yeah. like hold up back up for a second you're 18 you moved to california for Tara? You know, like the Olympic Training Center? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. That, so the year before was the Olympic year, and then the following year was World Championships. So before I went to World Championships in London, every Casual. break that I had, spring break, yeah. summer break, I'd move to the Olympic Training Center and, and train. Let me see. Before we got our medals, I uh, just After moved to the, the Olympic Training Center. <laughs> I went to London for... And then to train for the next. We get Olympics. it. We get it. Tara, was this was this like a habit of yours? Did you just walking up to people and giving random hugs or? Oh, absolutely not. No way. <laughs> um, especially not guys at the time. That was probably no. That's um, a power play. Though. That is a power play. I, yeah. you know, I look back and I was like, wow, you're really confident in yourself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, okay. And then, um, yeah, once you li- moved to California, I lived two and a half hours away from San Diego. And so one morning I drove up at 6.30. We planned this, by the way. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so like, I don't even know how my parents said yes. Like, I just graduated high school and they're like, okay. So at like 6.30 in the morning, I drove all the way to San Diego. And then we spent, ended up spending two days together. I know. And like okay. first time ever hanging out, ever talking, we trained together at the Chula Vista Center, which was like mm-hmm. so cool. Mm-hmm. And like that was like our first experience of kind of like life together. And it's like shaped everything that we're doing right now. And it's like wow. super cool yeah. to look back on. I can I can like imagine that training session where it's like, oh, what are you doing today? I'm just doing like some casual, you know, warm up <laughs> runs, and you're going all out like freaking. Oh, yeah. Did you guys race each other on the first day? <laughs> no. No. no, no, no. I would have beat him. So. Yeah, yeah, Everyone yeah, would embarrass him. And at the time, we were like still like friends. Like we hadn't like admitted that we liked each other. Like we it would like joke like, about oh, it. Oh, it was clear. It was, not, like, it was clear. You both were well aware. Yeah. 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 We, yeah. Never, like, we, never, we never expressed it that like. You didn't started. drive to San Diego to see your friend. Yeah. yeah. But this is also, you gotta, you gotta know, like this is the summer before we're going to college and we're going to college in two separate places. So it was like, man, this would be a really dumb time to get in a relationship. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> yeah. You know, I was like, I'm not going to college with a boyfriend. No way. Wait. So when did you lock it down then? At what point was it friends to. We're like here. A month later? Uh, yeah, m- uh, about a month later. Yeah. Well, we had. So we you had did it like, before college? You know, all the yeah. time. Yeah. yeah right. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. So you guys ended up going to different colleges? Yes. Yeah. We established that early as like we're gonna we're gonna do what's best for ourselves, mm-hmm. and then it, like if this works out, like great, like that would be awesome. But let's focus on ourselves and make decisions based on that. So. Mm-hmm. So walk us through that four year journey, basically you decided to start dating before you got to college, which was not the same one. No. So you guys did long distance for four years? For four years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Holy crap. It was, it was difficult. It was very We need difficult. to have an entire, like a whole nother podcast with just you yeah. guys about long distance. It's, it was rough. And an, and an exclusive that I don't think anybody else knows. Tara actually broke up with me freshman year. For like <laughs> what while. happened? Well, I was just overwhelmed and stressed and there's just so much going on. And 
Uh, it made us a lot better for it. it like, I think I think it's really that understandable. Person was hard, you know. But yeah, it definitely made us stronger. Yeah, most definitely. And it was just like so much new stuff. Like we moved from essentially the, the West Coast to the South. I was like, culture's different, people are different, coaching's different, training's different. I'm like, not at home. Like it's yeah. a five hour flight home. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's just it's just a lot. And it was just like like Tara said, like not having your person with you makes like communication really hard. It makes like feeling like loved and feeling like, you know, just like a part of the relationship very difficult, especially when you're both student athletes and you have like 30 hours a week of practice and then an extra however many hours you're doing in the semester so it was, it was a lot so tara tell me about your thoughts on the transfer portal because you started at georgia yeah and then you left the sec which is yeah. breaks my heart i'm a vandy boy oh and you wow went to texas yeah. okay but you tra- you transferred in 2019 yeah the year yeah. before covid and the whole thing switched T- talk to me yeah so i went to university of georgia 2017 to the end of 2018 um, and transferred to University of Texas. I did not have the time that I wanted or the time I was promised or like Mm. everything around what brought me to UGA. I wasn't feeling the school itself. Amazing. Athens. Amazing. Love it. Just the, the environment wasn't healthy for me. So I decided what was in my best interest is to like go. And my parents had just gotten a divorce. So my dad moved back to Texas and my mom was planning on moving back to Texas. Um, Cause that's where we, I was born and whatnot. Um, and I was like, I want to be closer to home. University of Texas was my dream school. So like that was a very big push. And then um, coach Edric Floriel, who actually recruited me to go to Kentucky went to University of Texas. So that was like a huge, huge thing. And then I was close to my parents, three hour drive. Closer to me. Closer to Hunter. It was now eight hours instead of 13 hours. Yeah. Yeah. And, Mm -hmm. and like at Georgia, you like, you just talk about some of the injuries you went through. Oh yeah. It was ridiculous. So I, when I got to Georgia, I started training with them and then I started developing a back problem and like back pain. And it was, it was going on for quite some time. And I was going up to them asking like, Hey, what's going on with my back? And I'd always get the same answer. Oh, it's just a muscle spasm or you're just, your back is just super tight. And so they treated it as that. And then I was like, you know, it's getting worse. I think I need something imaging. I was like, I think I need an MRI. And they're like, no, it's just a muscle spasm. Like your back's okay. As soon as I left Georgia, as soon as I stepped on campus at Texas, I got an MRI and it showed I had two stress fractures in my back. Stop. <laughs> I had, yeah. I had one of those. Those are not They're brutal. Nice. Yeah. So yeah. As soon as I got to Texas in 2019, I had to sit out um, mm-hmm. because my coach blocked me because I was too good of an athlete to compete against his ladies oh man Um, yeah hey no um (laughs) and then i had a back problem and i had stress fractures so i think the sitting out did well for that Mm -hmm. injury but like mentally it was it was hard but you freaking came back and dominated i sure did i like to look back at those times like yeah wait i I sure did i have more questions about that because (laughs) That's all just poly. Oh, oh Siri, Siri, what are, what are you doing? <laughs> okay. Um, that's all just politics and crap because mm-hmm. to have a coach like actively choose to be like, oh, I'm sorry, you're too good. I don't want you to compete with these people. Yeah, what well, that affects your career drastically. My entire everything. It affects my life, my mental health, and my physical. So, so how then did you? I don't want to say overcome that because mm-hmm. it's not like. It's not on you to overcome. It's literally yeah. just a dumb thing. Someone that's just a dumb person. But how did you get through that? How did you get back like on the racing team and kind of on your track to the Olympics? Yeah, uh, a lot of time, <laughs> a lot of time just being spent, just training and not competing. Um, 
And then when I did go into like my unwell mental health, I had Hunter there to support me and telling me that you're going to, you're going to be there one day, like just keep on pushing, keep on trying. Um, and finally, finally in 2020, I was back, I was ready to go. And our first competition was four days away and I was at practice training and I fell and broke my foot. <laughs> no. Oh my God. It was like, they had posted something about it when you like finally competed after that. And it was like, it's been, and, no, it was like, it was 654 yeah, days since, since Tara I, Davis had competed. Like it was like, in, which in the track world is like an eternity. Like mm -hmm. that's like almost two years where it just hadn't competed at all through like being blocked or injuries or, or whatever. And it was just like, that was without a doubt. And this is coming from me. So, I, you know, the, like the hardest 18 months of our lives, like it was, it was challenging. And it was insane. Dang. And then, so yeah, <laughs> I break my foot and I have to sit out for like six weeks. And by that six weeks, it was like the second to last track meet of the season and or of the indoor season and um conference that was my first track meet back i it was one race and then the next week later COVID hit and nationals, and nationals got, canceled. got canceled and like dog and there was nothing How but did... you came back and freaking dominated <laughs> I, I did it let's i go. did it i did let's it go okay, okay. Dang, that's legit a crazy story. It is legit. And I have a million more questions. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sorry. I'm just going to be like, I got to know. <laughs> I got to know. Okay, hit it. Um, Andrew, we went through a huge phase in our life with Andrew um, going out for the NFL. And that took a huge toll on him and his mental health, just like jumping around teams, getting cut, different things like that. And that really affects a relationship. Because it puts a lot of like, to a certain extent, the weight of the relationship on the other person. So like yeah. on Hunter and on me to to try to support him and be his like cheerleading squad. Which you did a great job at. Thanks, babe. You're just hype man today. Um, so <laughs> As <you> Hunter, <laughs> watching your significant other go through something like that is so hard. It's so emotional. How did you? keep her spirits up and how did that like how did that affect your guys's relationship yeah i wish there was like a, a like a clean answer it was like mm -hmm. I just told her you got it and it was all good but it was like it was hard like there was days where it's just like there's nothing you can say to, to change the fact that that's the reality that tara's in you know like that's what tara's dealing with or in andrew's case like that's a real emotion that's a real thing that he is dealing with and and the way he's feeling and the emotions, you know, they have it are very real. And in that time, it gets even more difficult because it's like, I'm not sure what it is I can say to make it any better. You know what I mean? And it's almost like, it's just hard to understand. Like, I'm not even there. Like, I'm, I'm a thousand miles away. So in the same note, it's like, I can tell you that it's going to be okay as much as I want, but it's like, you're the one experiencing it. You're the one in there. So how, how can you trust that? Right? Like, it's not good now. I don't really see where it's going to go. Um, so I would say for the most part, it was like learning to not come up with solutions, not come up with like trying to give options of what can make it better. And really just like trying to be there to listen and like understand and like just kind of talk through things. And a lot of times it was like, without a cause like that we weren't going to find a solution to what she was feeling but at least she had someone there to like mm -hmm. talk about it with who wasn't gonna you know judge her or think some some kind of way and it's like I wasn't perfect throughout the whole process either but you know I was just kind of let me be the rock let me be the cheerleading squad let's get through this together kind of thing um and it was difficult because like I had my own things going on as well mm -hmm. you know like I'm also an athlete I also have my season like mm -hmm. so it was it was a lot and it, it affected us heavily uh, I would say the other problem is we were broke, like <laughs> no money, like, and like going to see each other was very difficult. Like I couldn't afford a flight. So a lot of times, like I would drive from Fayetteville to Georgia on Friday, stay Saturday and then drive home Sunday, which is like Dang. a 13 hour drive. And it was like the only way we could make it work. But 
Mm-hmm. You know, it's like you do some crazy things for love and, and the people mm-hmm. you care about. That's love. That's love. So mirroring what Tara's going through, what was going, like, what were your four years of college like as you guys are like going down your paths? Um, I mean, I think my experience was, was really great. Um, on the, on the opposite side of Tara, like getting to a school and not really getting like what she was promised or what she was told, like I felt everything that the coaches had said to me and everything that the program was about is like what I got, like it, you know, what, what you see is what you get when I came here. Um, and the other thing is like, my recruiting process was very different. Like Tara was the best athlete in the country. She's going to get to college and score points at a collegiate level, like win nationals from as a freshman. I was the first double amputee to ever be running fast enough times to get into the division one and not fast enough to like win NCAAs my freshman year, you know? So it's like, I had trouble finding a school who's willing to stick their neck out for me and say like, Hey, we believe in you and what you're doing. And we want to like, basically risk a scholarship on you. Um, and so having Arkansas do that was as, as much of a, like, Hey, we got your back as I needed. And, you know, there was ups and downs, but overall I had, I had a really great college experience. Today's episode is brought to you by aura frames. If you are looking for good mother's day gifts then check out aura frames because These things were named the number one digital frame by Wirecutter and selected as one of Oprah's favorite things three years in a row. It's guaranteed to make mom smile. It sure is, and I would love one, babe. An Aura frame brings you all of your photos and videos together in one gorgeous high resolution display where mom can really enjoy them, AKA not a group text or a social media platform. Actually, something you can put on your desktop, which is beautiful. Preload any frame with meaningful memories and a special message that will appear as soon as it's set up. Invite the whole family to add to the frame from anywhere in the world and feel close to everyone at any time. We have one in our kitchen and we love it. It's fun to load different pictures on there at different phases of life. Uh, We'll even change it when we have groups of people over. But one of the most popular gifts for major holidays like Mother's Day, Aura frames regularly sell out. So make sure that you don't miss out. Get yours at a discount while it lasts from now until Mother's Day. Listeners can save on the perfect gift and visit AuraFrames.com. That's A-U-R-A frames.com. Listeners can use code EASTFAM to get up to $20 off while supplies last. Terms and conditions do apply. Every mom on your list will love this gift. It's the picture frame reimagined. Remember, get it on this link only at AuraFrames.com forward slash EASTFAM. Let's get back to it. What is the Arkansas pigs? Pig? Pigs? Raise back. Pig suey? One of my teammates actually became the head coach of the gymnastics team there. Jordan Weber. Jordan Weber. Yeah. Yeah. Weber. 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 Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. She's okay. super sweet. Um, yeah. And super great coach. They've done awesome. We have some friends on the gymnastics team. So mm-hmm. that's awesome. We're, we're big fans. Okay. So four years go by. It's now 2020? 2020? 2021. 2021. Yeah. 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 Math checks COVID. Out. Yeah. <laughs> COVID has hit, which I even remember watching like the pandemic hit with the Olympics and everything. And that is, that is so hard for an athlete, especially a training athlete, competing athlete, the Olympics, the Olympic trials, everything that throws, that throws an entire career's worth of planning off. Yeah. So outside of the personal side, how did you guys navigate your professional careers? in still trying to make the games, but setting it back a year or two, yeah. two. Wow. Um, one, man, it's tough. <clears throat> I think in our case, the postponement actually was really helpful. Um, 2020 Tara was definitely not in a place where one, she was going to make an Olympic team and two, like she was mentally ready to take that on. Yeah. Um, so I think in a way it came at a time where we really needed just a second to figure out, who we were and the day after like everything got canceled we were in new mexico for nationals got sent home without competing that next day we had a meeting with the team and our coaches were like we don't care where you go you can't stay here like there's nothing for you here so i packed my bags up that day i drove to austin um and i was planning on staying there like a week we'll see what happens and the whole country shut down everything's done 
And we ended up spending like what, six months, Mm -hmm. four months, something like that. A a pretty long amount of time in Austin, just like us and nothing to do, no responsibilities. Just like- It was the greatest time ever. Figuring out who we were and- and It was so much fun. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. It was great. Like I've (laughs) always had someone telling me what to do or making me go to this place and this place or like, I don't know, just someone in the back of my head and like no one was- telling me to do anything and like the first three days I was like this is bad I need to do something what's going on what's going on and then I was like oh my gosh I don't have to do anything Mm. and then like coaches were like no more training like the Olympics are done and I was like the Olympics are done like what the heck is going on and once he got there I was like oh this is gonna be a great time Mm. this is gonna be a great time it, it forced us to figure out who we were if we didn't have track because mm-hmm. it was like our whole lives have been track track mm-hmm. track and it's like in an instant it was all taken away it was all taken away and then it's like well, who are you mm-hmm. if you're not tar davis the track athlete and who are you if you're not hunter woodhall the you know the track athlete and it's like yeah it was just it was it was a very like enlightening experience for us i think um so what what'd you find out uh, I can binge watch Netflix like so quick. <laughs> like I can, I can just be up. I can binge watch two seasons in like literally twenty four hours. Just... That's amazing, then... Tara. <laughs> we did a lot. Um, I think we we made a lot of videos. We made a lot of videos, so that's kind of where yeah, like our social media like got serious. We're like, man, if track goes away tomorrow and we can't run and we can't like make a living running track, like we better have a plan B. Um, so we started getting in that. And then also like, I have a clothing company that mm-hmm. I started literally that Casual. same week that all of this happened. And I don't think it would be where it is if I hadn't had like six months to just put my head down mm-hmm. and like work on something bit outside of, you know, track. So and giant hoodies took off during that time. Yeah. Cause it was great for giant hoodies. I feel like the odd man out here. Cause I got like three once in a generation. <laughs> <laughs> athletes sitting here and i'm the only one who's not that situation but like <laughs> you're, the, in the hunter, you're an uh, nfl player hunter ran a 46 yeah. <laughs> second 400 <clears throat> hold on insane. hold on let's do That's some L- let me let me do this experiment so we're just gonna we're gonna take a moment of silence for the duration of time no, stop it that hunter, <laughs> would have, hunter would have crossed the 400 meter line and i'm still running are you, are you ready here we go hold your breath are you going for 46 seconds no. Oh, Everybody, the difference between our PRs. The difference. Ready? So I finished nine seconds ago at this point. I see. I see what we're doing here. It's still going. And I just crossed the finish line. Wow. Bro, you're already like Gatorated up. You're already like doing interviews. You took a phone call, <laughs> said, "Mom, this is how I did." Tara on the like, side yeah, hug Tara. <laughs> yeah. She's like taking a vic- You probably did a victory lap in that time. That's probably. crazy. And then we got Tara. And you, just little prodigy kids. Not, no. It's Jumping just crazy. It's, it's, <laughs> oh, in our bodies like no other. <laughs> it's, just, it's just fun. But I don't know what I was going with that, yeah. actually. But. Um, <laughs> so 2021 comes around. Olympic trials come around. How, I want to ask about Olympic trials, but I want to go to the games. Um, how are Olympic trials for you guys? It's like within your relationship, because you're both rooting for each other. Did you guys feel pressure to both make it? Were you nervous yeah. that like one would and one would you not? Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. The pressure for, to make the Olympic team? Yeah. Heck yeah. Once, once, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I, once the Olympics started coming around and then I think Twitter and stuff started saying like, oh, Olympic prodigies are they're yeah. going to try out for the teams and yada, yada, yada. I was like, oh. Yeah, there was like a media thing beforehand of like these two are trying to do it. And then at nationals, at NCAAs, they were talking about me making the team. And I was like, we can't talk about that yet because I haven't made the team. I was like, Mm -hmm. and it was was extra pressure for me because like she's Olympics, I'm Paralympics. The Olympic trials were two weeks before the Paralympic trials. Yeah. So I was at the Olympic trials, watched her make the team. And then it was like one of two. Like, mm-hmm. you know, 50% there and it's a hundred percent on me to, to finish it. So, um, or wait, was it, was it, it was me opposite. Yeah. Opposite. So I, I made the team it. and then Tara. Okay. Tara I was going to ask who, like who technically qualified first, she did. because then the second person that, that would be hard. 
Yeah. And I feel like it would be hard for you too, Hunter, to watch and be like, oh, God, please make it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's one of those things where it's like, if you don't make it, like, it's kind of weird if I'm excited because I made it. Yeah. It's, it's a weird dynamic. Even so. at the meet, I was on the bubble to get into the finals. And I, was, <laughs> I don't know how they were handling that. Yeah, like, she clutched it, though. Third jump. Clutch the bag. I think that's the iconic picture we've all seen of like yeah. you two hugging on the track mm -hmm. or like up in the stands maybe. Yeah. yeah. I was on the track. He was in the stands basically. Yeah. 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 That was, that was insane. And like, man, exhilarating. Like when I talk about most exciting moments in my life, like yeah. when we, when, when we, like the third jump was crazy. Cause it was like, we think she's good, but it's like, you have three more jumps with nine world-class athletes. Like anything could happen. And then that last jump when she jumped and it like solidified, solidified it, it was just like, wow. Like just the last, it was like, thank God these last two years came to something. Yeah. Like it was worth it. For, and this is why it was, mm -hmm. it was incredible. Mm. Yeah. Today's episode is also brought to you by BetterHelp. We've talked to you about BetterHelp before. We've talked to you about mental health before, but May is Mental Health Awareness Month. So let's tell them about BetterHelp. I really wish BetterHelp had been an option during my career because I love the fact that it's available for everyone everywhere. With May being Mental Health Awareness Month, BetterHelp is a great sponsor to come alongside this month to spread awareness. So when you go on BetterHelp, they actually help to assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. It takes the stress out of trying to find someone to be able to talk to on a professional capacity. They are truly awesome. You can even start communicating in under 48 hours with your matched therapist. It's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It is professional counseling done securely online. You'll get timely and thoughtful responses. Plus, you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions so you won't ever have to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room as with traditional therapy. Yes, and it's also more affordable than traditional offline counseling. Plus, they have financial aid available, which we're big fans of. So to review, BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist. So you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy. So why don't you give it a try and see if online therapy can help lower your stress. Couple Things listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash eastfam. Try it out. Use our code eastfam to get 10% off at betterhelp.com. Let's get back to it. So going from there to the Olympics, since you have Olympics and Paralympics, were you able to be together for the games or were you completely separated? We were separated. Man. We tried so many ins and outs and trying yeah. to pull so many strings. We and called all our favorites in. <laughs> no. Oh, no. Everything. Yeah, it was Because sick. didn't COVID protocol not allow for even spectators or spouses or anybody to like stay yeah. No and one. And then and for us, we had to be 48 hours after you've competed out of Tokyo. Like two days later, you got to be gone. Yeah. So I couldn't even Dang. like stay to watch the rest of the track meet that's going on. And I, I literally had to leave. Opening or closing ceremonies. And no, too. I didn't get to go to opening ceremonies because we could only be in Tokyo five days prior to your event. And mine was like in the middle. Mm -hmm. um, and then I had to leave right after. So. And then he how was later. How was that experience for you guys though? Because it's the big one, the biggest moment of your careers. Yeah, you're experiencing it separately, mm -hmm. but also probably watching each other on TV. How did you have to kind of compartmentalize your performance versus each other's? I think we had such like a, a, an amount of time, like it was two weeks in between the both of them. So I think we had enough time to kind of like see yeah. it digest what happened and then be like so we were together a week between the two in in arkansas so i think it was like a time for us to digest like what happened and kind of like just make it real before i left mm -hmm. and then it was like a diff another experience on top of it so i i don't know i think i, I think, think the it worked reset out well. was good yeah, yeah. it's a good good quick reset hmm. tell us the proposal story <laughs> Congratulations, oh, by the way. The entire okay. world was waiting yeah. for this, by the way. Thank you. Sorry? I said the entire world was waiting for this. Oh, my gosh. We all got to know you guys so well. Yeah. It was kind of like, when is this going to happen? About it every day. <laughs> uh, no, it was, it was really amazing. I mean, after, after the Olympics, like, we had planned to go on a trip. We've never been on a vacation. Um, like, we travel a lot, but it's 
for track. So it kind of feels like work. So we're like, man, let's do something for us. And we chose to, to go to Cabo for a week and just like relax and do nothing and just have fun. And I had another exclusive. I had bought the engagement ring in like April and this is now like September at this point. Oh my gosh. So I'd had this ring for a long time and I just didn't really know the right time to do it. And we planned this Cabo trip. And on the last three days, we got this like super insane Airbnb. Like it was like a gift to ourselves for like a really great year. And it was like right on the beach. It was this beautiful home. And it was just like, in my head, I was like, man, this is perfect. Like this, this is the place to do it. Uh, and the other thing was like, we had six days before that to just enjoy the vacation. Like I didn't want to make the vacation about like my proposal. Like I wanted us to enjoy it. And then that almost be like the nightcap of the, of the trip. And so I, I had talked to my agents, A3, and they were making calls. We were trying to figure all this out. We got like people to come to the beach while we were gone, set up this whole like cool, like gazebo kind of thing. And like the whole nine yards and like somebody to come and take photos and stuff. And then it was just up to me to like get tar out of the house for like four plus hours. And the other thing was I have this, beautiful ring in my pocket and I'm walking around downtown Cabo like with this ring sitting in my no. pocket so I keep like checking I'm stressing I'm sweating and I had to do this for like hours and then we went back to the house and it was like the, kind of the end of the trip and I was like I got one more surprise for you and Tara's like can I go pee first and I'm like this is great this is starting out fantastically uh, I don't know what was going on in your mind at that time. Oh, yeah. Um, I really did have to go pee. I was being fed <laughs> drinks the entire lunch. And there was like a teepee like this. <laughs> <laughs> I really said this before. <laughs> so there was a teepee like this. I could see like the top of it. Out the window? <laughs> out the window. Oh. And as soon as I turned around, I saw it at the corner of my eye and I was like... And I went to the bathroom and I like went to the bathroom, whatever. And I looked in the mirror. I was like, you're getting engaged. Yeah. Uh, and I was like, oh my gosh, it's happening. It's happening. And then we, I like went down, down the stairs. Yeah. We walked down Did you suspect beach. anything before that or like during the trip? No. Well, obviously like we're in Cabo and like, at times come, like we've checked everything off of our checklist. Like it would be a perfect time to do it, but like, by the end of the trip, I was like, oh, it's not gonna happen. Oh well. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, so you went into the bathroom to go pee, Tara, and you gave yourself a hype speech or like it was like a <laughs> looking yourself like a cool runnings moment, like yelling cheer. at yourself. At <laughs> like, this is cool, don't freak out. <laughs> I was like, oh, man. I, was like, <laughs> I walked out straight faced. <laughs> Do you remember what you, you remember what you uh, said to her when you proposed? A whole lot of real just sappy kind of stuff. Did you? Mm -hmm. I swear he spoke Spanish, but I could have been dreaming. You spoke Spanish. <laughs> you some in there, yeah. you know. Winning Cabo. Yeah. Winning. Do you speak Spanish? Uh, yeah. Um, no, it was great though. And honestly, like the best trip I've ever had in my life. Yeah, we had so, so much fun. fun. It was a blast. So through and through. Yeah, it was great. I can't believe you waited for the last day. I could not have done that. I would have had to do it the day we got down to Cabo. Yeah, I you mean, also, it would have been easier. I just, I wanted to keep the, you know, the yeah. purpose of the trip, the trip. So, uh, you know. I don't know. I, yeah, I basically planned the trip. So, <laughs> I, I, it was like, I didn't expect it to be on the trip that I planned. You know, like, I was, I was like, wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Big brain moves. I was saying, uh, Andrew also proposed the day after he got the ring because he couldn't hang on to it any longer. So I'm yeah. impressed with how long you held on to it. Yeah. That's what I, well, I'm like a last minute, like I'm going to figure it out right at the end. And that's the plan oh. we're going to go with. So I was like, this, this is the one thing I'm going to like get ahead of time. Cause I knew that when I like did it, it was going to be like a last minute thing. Like I was going to plan it last minute. And I know you like can't get an engagement ring. Like within three days. Cause that's probably how long it would take me to plan. And, um, <laughs> so I knew I had to lock that in. Luckily my best friend owns a jewelry store too. So it, it like made the process a little bit more streamlined, a little bit easier. Also, I have to ask, who is this? He's adorable. Is Milo. 
this is Mila. We have a whole zoo of of <laughs> friends and family. We got a little another puppy down here. Her name is Winnie. Oh, she just got groomed today, and then it's in the she looks good. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. Milo looks great. Winnie, on the other hand, she just sh- looks cute. So, good. how's engagement? Is it fun? Yeah, it's so yeah, much it's fun. So much fun. I think what's cooler is that like now we live together, and like now we are engaged, living together, and I think that like brings a cool part of our relationship and a new part of our relationship. Um, there are hard days, like. Yeah, for sure. No other. Yeah. Why did you say it like that? <laughs> Just being honest, you know. Yeah. Like, yeah. Which is true. Yeah. It's like we don't want to put on the the front that like everything's happy and jolly. We're perfect. You just, you <laughs> skip around and yeah. blow rainbows every day. You know what I mean? Um, but no, it's it is really great. It's been super fun living together. Um, just like learning about each other in like mm-hmm. such a more in depth way. I feel like because distance, you just don't get all of that um and i'm glad we went through distance though because it was the hardest thing ever and it makes this seem a lot easier feel a lot mm-hmm. easier i was gonna ask that question though so your first four years of your relationship was long distance you guys have lived together for how long now since august how yeah. was that transition because you guys are both athletes you're both very competitive very driven and to be an elite athlete, you have to have a very, I don't want to say a selfish mindset, but like yeah. your career is like your body and your training. Mm-hmm. And now you're living together. Especially when you live alone. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. how did, how did that transition work for you guys? Was it like a big learning curve trying to figure out how to spend every waking COVID, second together? Yeah. yeah. COVID really helped. Yeah. The six months of COVID was really helpful for us because mm-hmm. we kind of like got a you know a feel of what it would be like to live together and like we were stuck in my apartment like this small little apartment for six months like literally 24 hours of the day we were inside like no going outside so um yeah and we the other thing was like we knew we weren't going to move into each together until after the olympics like Mm -hmm. olympics was number one priority we were staying where we were we weren't changing anything until the games were over But we had everything planned out. Like I bought the house that we're in now in March with the intention to move into it together, like way down the road. So whenever it was, I lived here for like seven months with literally a mattress (laughs) and pretty much nothing else, like a couch that I brought from my college house. Like I lived bare bones and I I was fine with it. I was a big fan. So when she moved in, it was kind of like, a smoother transition um and she made a real big sacrifice like she left everything in austin Mm -hmm. so we could like start our lives here in fayetteville which i think was like the biggest decision of like who's gonna leave their their current you know life Mm -hmm. man fayetteville is popping though isn't it it's so funny it is so fun here (laughs) i actually like it but yeah Fayetteville's fayetteville's a groovy little town yeah what are you guys' goals, like, with your relationship together, like, as a family, Olympic-wise? Uh, yeah. Talk to us. Man, we're getting a lot of exclusives here. Um, <laughs> the current plan is to hang up the spikes after 2024. Um, I think that we understand that there's a lot more to life than just the sport. And <clears throat> we kind of thought, like, If we don't have a hard deadline, it's always going to be like, oh, let's see what happens next year. You know Mm. what I mean? Whereas now it's like, we're done after 2024. Let's like squeeze this lemon as as much as we can. You know, like let's get everything we want out of the sport. So when it's over, we don't walk away like, man, I wish I would have done X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's our plan. And then after that, like, just want to focus on, you know, our relationship, being happy, like traveling a lot, traveling. Yeah. Just like living our lives, like all the things that we, didn't get to do because of the athletic sacrifices we've made for the past, you know, memorable times mm-hmm. in our lives. Um, and then, you know, I don't know if we've figured out what we want to do as far as a family and stuff, but mm-hmm. we're kind of taking it as, as we go. Mm-hmm. When's the wedding? October 16th. Oh, really? This year? Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm super excited. I've been wedding planning um, for the past couple of days now. I've been kind of planning it off, but I'm starting to envision yeah. Getting some inspiration. Yes. 
Yeah. And with, with like track, like we had to do in the off season and October is like our favorite month, the beautiful month in Texas. So it's like, we either had 11 months or 20 months. Like it was either like two years or one year. And so it worked out really well. So it's been, it's been good. Well, we just marked our calendars. We're so excited and honored to to join you on that day. Stop just can't. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we we will be adding y'all to the list. <laughs> <laughs> no, just be wait careful. To, I don't wait, know if you made the list up. yet. It's it like it's crazy. Uh, you have to start yeah. asking people. Like I don't know if Aunt Peggy makes the list. We got to take her <laughs> yeah. off. <laughs> My mom, she sent her list. I was like, who is this? Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, it's the parents' <laughs> list that get you. Yeah. I never even imagined it. I was like, and then like, you'll oh, do like oh, a. Open my list. <laughs> yeah. And you'll get like a seating chart from them and they'll be like, oh, my best friend Peggy needs to be sitting at the head table. I'm like, excuse me? What? <laughs> yeah. But it's crazy. So um, my favorite question to ask. We asked our some of our friends last night these questions. Um, first, you have to choose who goes first without knowing the question. Okay. I'll go. Oh, okay. whoa. She usually doesn't do that. That's Dang, awesome. Tara just steps up and makes I know. plays. Yeah. Uh, what's your favorite thing about Hunter? Aw, his personality. He has a great Why? personality. I don't know. He's just always happy and always bubbly. And I, I'm always the one that really feels moody. And like for him, he's just, he's always a light. And it's insane how just like joyful this kid is. He's really sweet. Yeah, you're welcome. Dang. Okay, <laughs> Hunter. On, on our entire relationship for like the first two three years of our relationship you could not get her to say something nice about me like if someone's like what do you love about hunter You'd be like what just couldn't do it uh, <laughs> yeah it was just one of those mental blocks where i just wouldn't i wouldn't express feelings no, uh -huh. sappy little sappy little girl okay <laughs> okay hunter uh, uh, what's okay. your favorite thing about tara uh my favorite thing about tara is definitely like her resilience and ability to fight through difficult times like what we've talked about like that that showed me everything that i needed to know to like know that that you know that i love her and she's the one for me is like i saw how difficult it was and, and i saw how like challenging that part of her life was and to see how she handled it and then <clears throat> in the end like overcame it it's like it, it, i don't know it's insane and i think it's just like if you can be with somebody at their, you know, quote unquote rock bottom and, and see them through that. Like, I think you learn a lot about a person and yeah, I mean, that is, it's just crazy. So it's like, I know if we go through some, some bad stuff, some rocky spots, like I got a co-pilot who's ready to, you know, take it on. So I, I, I love that. Thanks. Mm. It's cool. I kind of like, uh, how you were describing dealing with the adversity I feel like there's so many like self-help or like motivational books where it's like, ah, just freaking think the right way and you can get out of the situation. But sometimes it does help to kind of just be in the moment, like, like feel the pain with yeah. the hope and expectation that it ends. But yeah. like, you know, you being together and like just comforting and being an ear for each other is, is a, a wise way to approach that. So hats off to, to both of you. Um, Appreciate that. Thanks. <clears throat> Where does social media play uh, in the future, post twenty twenty four? Um, I think like a a fairly big part. Um, I think ideally we would like to like move away from like the short form content, which is kind of where like I definitely got my start and kind of like what kick started the social media stuff and get more into like long form stuff. So we're really putting a lot of time, energy and effort into like YouTube. Uh, we really have like goals to start our own podcast at some point. Um, <clears throat> and things that are like a little bit less like gritty, like just little things here and there and more like, like big picture, like really um, just, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> more. more, more stuff. Yeah. Less quality over quantity yeah. i should say because with like the short form it's like post something new every day come up with a creative idea and it's exhausting mm -hmm. you know whereas like we can make one bad a video every week on youtube that we really love and that really shows like who we yeah. are so yeah. yeah i think more of that who loves social media and the process of creation more between you two this guy <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah same definitely. setup bro i would i freaking love it i love it i will watch videos on 
all of it all day. And Sean's yeah. like, just tell me. Just tell me what you want me to do. Tell me what you want me to do. Yeah, you just, yeah, you just explain this dynamic perfectly. Like, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm about it. Like, every everything everything you just said. And even, like, past, like, just the creating. Like, I love, like, the technology. I love cameras. Like, I love mm-hmm. all of this stuff. And I'm, like, I'm constantly learning um, about more of it. And Tara's just, like, I don't care. Just, like, Dude. where do I, where do I need to go? <laughs> like, let, right. let me know when you start a podcast. This whole thing. So, we just, like, finished the studio. And the whole, oh, like, that's uh, so awesome. sick. the mics with the light. Hold on. Let me see. That's great. The, like, the lighting oh my God, and stuff. Nice. So cool. It's, the like, bro. It looks great. Ridiculous. It took us. But it's always a learning process, and I feel like yeah. that's what carrying over with the with the athletic mindset. It's like there's always something I could improve at. And yeah, that yeah, it's freaking. I love it. No, I'm the same way. Like I'm yeah. very like task oriented. Sean, did you come up with the studio yourself? The idea? Anyway? No. Well, yes and no. The decor, yes. Yeah. The functionality, yeah. no. No, we well, have, I'm talking about yeah, the decor. Yeah. I don't care yes. about the technology. Yes. It looks so good. <laughs> Thank I you. I'm so proud of you. I'm gonna get to Thank the inspiration. Yeah, yes, we have, we have a like a a whole room upstairs just dedicated to convert it into like a studio for ourselves. It's not going so, anywhere right yeah, now. Yeah, we're it's we're, hard. We're it is hard. Block. Well, we're not. It's really hard. <laughs> and today's episode is brought to you by Athletic Greens. You know what happened recently? What? We almost ran out of athletic greens and I freaked out. But just when I thought there was no hope, a new box showed up. I was it's comical because I think we have 20 pounds of athletic greens sitting on our dining table. And right we now. go through it. Yes. Yeah, so if you guys are new to the AG1 lifestyle, athletic greens is your, how would I say it? All your nutritional gaps and one scoop of a with, greens powder. That's right. With just one delicious scoop of Athletic Greens, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. If you guys were to ask what one supplement you should take a day, I would say Athletic Greens. And the reason why is because Athletic Greens supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and aging. It's a lot of things. I love the fact that I can use it every single day and it's so convenient with its travel packs. Not only is it healthy and convenient, it's priced at an amazing rate. It's less than $3 a day. That's right. Right now it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. And to make it easy, Athletic Greens is gonna give you a free one year supply of immune supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com forward slash East fam. Again, that is athleticgreens.com forward slash East fam to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Let's get back to it. Hunter feels like the old soul wise man. Tara is like here for a good time type. Uh, vibe, I feel yeah, like. I gotta be, I gotta make him young. I gotta keep him young. <laughs> yeah. Boy, this girl like freshman and sophomore year. Oh my gosh, oh, like <laughs> she could party, like she's down to have a good time. And wow. like, yeah, I think it's partly where I'm, like I, I was raised in Utah um, I'm, and I'm not LDS myself, but like <clears throat> a lot of the people that I were around was LDS. So there wasn't drinking, there wasn't smoking, <laughs> there wasn't parties. Like if we wanted to have a good time, we would like jump in our car and go drive to an abandoned house. Like that was a good time for us on the weekend in high school. So like <laughs> when I met Tara and when I came to college, I was like, this is just. My weekends were like, the parties I attended in high school were better than the ones I attended in college. Oh gosh. Yeah. So my, it was fun though, but I'm Tara glad I got out it. very young. Yeah. Junior year came around and you were like, I was like, oh. with it. I was like I'm ready to stay inside. Yeah. Now I'm more like this party. <laughs> You described that dynamic perfectly for us, where it was like, I, I had not had a sip of alcohol, none of like, no, uh, what do you call it? Vices before I met yeah, Sean. Yeah. And then it's like, bro, she, okay. you got me. Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 Yeah. Exclusive. Yeah. Exclusive. yeah. Oh, man. Last question for you guys. Yeah. Out of like track college you're dating your long distance now engagement if you were to like pass it on what's the best piece of advice you would give about relationships communication yeah which is like a very broad term (laughs) (laughs) yeah but it's so true and for me the big i'll make it specific the biggest thing that i've learned is like i feel like it's now like a popular thing to say but like 
gaslighting, like the term, which is basically like not validating somebody's feelings. And I think like a lot of times it's easy for you in a relationship to have your partner say something and you base like the value of that statement on how you feel about it or how it would affect you. And then it's like changing that and being like, my partner is not going to tell me something is not going to express something to me that, that isn't an actual feeling that they're experiencing. Right. So it's like learning to not only like hear somebody saying something, but taking it very genuinely. Like this is, this is genuinely what they mean. This is how they feel. And like working on things and taking steps to like actually make it better. And, and we're not perfect at it, but mm -hmm. I, I feel like we are like getting better. So that'd be my, that'd be my deep take. listening. Deep. Yeah. I like that. Just so you guys can look back on this uh, and laugh. What are your expectations for how marriage will change your relationship? Hmm. Um, I'm putting her name on all the bills. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot cheaper for me. Uh, no, I, I don't. I don't know. I, I think the bit. Actually, I do know. What I think my expectation is that. Um, people outside of our relationship will take us more seriously. Mm -hmm. Like we were dating for four years and people very much treated it as like, oh, you're dating. You're two separate people. You're not like, if that makes sense. It's like almost mm -hmm. like with the anticipation of, of you breaking, breaking up. up. Yeah. yeah. So I and think, like, there's just, oh, well, that's just not going to last type yeah, of situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now mm -hmm. it's like, we are, we are coming, we are going to wherever we're going as the Woodhalls, like as, as a married couple, not as Tar and Hunter individually being somewhere. So, yo, marriage is the freaking dopest. I it love is awesome. it. And so I'm excited exciting. for you guys. Also, just honestly, big fans of your approach, uh, how you've overcome your adversities, uh, you know, in kind, you've each had such an amazing story and I appreciate you coming on, sharing it with us. Uh, I cannot wait to see you guys crush life and your careers, uh, through 2024. And then also afterwards, which I think will be, uh, even more successful and even bigger. So, um, anyway, honored to meet you and thank you for giving us the time of day. Yeah, thank fun. you. Likewise. This is so much fun. Yeah, we had so much fun. I'm, the anticipation of this was just <laughs> yeah. was so good. Yeah. Wow. Yes. Have you guys are taking any new like applications for friends or stuff? Are you looking for new? <laughs> oh, if you're on the show, you're a friend we're already. Not, no, we're not. Applications <laughs> okay. are closed. Okay. All right, All right guys. <laughs> yes. Have a good one. Thank yeah. you, guys. Thank you. Hey, it's Andrew. And Sean. Just want to say congratulations on making it through that video. That's a major commitment. It's a long time. It's about an hour. Might as well subscribe. Or if you want to see other videos, click here and here. See you next time.